Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be learning how to cut through the noise with segmentation and personalization. My name is Maddie Sherman. I'm a senior product marketing strategist at Attentive. And we're here with Rachel Engel, a team lead on the strategic client strategy team. We are joined by two amazing customers. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have Kevin Regard, a senior MarTech manager at Crocs. And we have Nathan Enderly, an e-commerce analytics leader from Shields. Just to tell you a little bit about their companies, Crocs is one of the world's largest footwear brands. And they're an example of a brand that's using segments to their advantage to create unique customer experiences. And Shields is a one-of-a-kind sporting goods and entertainment store with locations across the US. Shields is using segments to connect with their audience's unique interests. So now I'm going to give you a quick overview of the flow of our presentation today. We'll start with the basics. Why personalized marketing, why it's important, and what are some of the results that you'll see. Next, we're going to get started with, with segmentation and personalization. For our segmentation pros, you'll be learning how to level up your personalization strategy with data, strategy, and integrations. We'll then have a conversation with Crocs and Shields so you can learn more about their best-in-class marketing programs. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but you probably aren't personalizing enough. So let me tell you why. Marketing personalization has been a huge trend over the past few years. However, it's no longer just a trend. It's a necessity, and the bar is high. 71% of retailers feel they excel at personalized marketing, but only 34% of consumers agree. So chances are, even if you have some marketing personalization strategy in play, there's more you can be doing. And good news, that's why you're here to learn. Next, personalization is necessary to maintain customer loyalty. 62% of consumers say brands will lose their loyalty if they deliver unpersonalized experiences. Personalization isn't just one and done. It's something that needs to be done consistently. And finally, personalization will make you more money and increase lifetime value. 49% of consumers will likely become repeat buyers after a personalized shopping experience. And this might be easier than you think, so stay tuned. Now, let's funnel this down to why we are here today, which is SMS marketing. Looking at total retail sales, a huge portion is now coming from mobile, which you probably all know. And looking at last year's holiday season in particular, I know that's top of mind for you all as you're sitting here today, 43% of online retail sales were made from smartphones. That's a whopping $88 billion. Now all said, reaching your customers via mobile is more important than ever, and SMS is the channel that will deliver the most personalized experience. So now, we've heard about the problem, we've heard about what's in the market, and the question is, what is your solution, and what are you going to do about it? Attentive is the market leader when it comes to SMS marketing, and segments are your solution for easy and effective SMS personalization. So before we jump into the core content of our session, let's define our key terms. These key terms are often used interchangeably, however, they are different, and knowing how you differentiate them will help you better define your strategy in the future. So let's start with segmentation. Segmentation is how you dissect your audience into smaller groups based on identifiable characteristics. Think location, demographics, engagement, loyalty, and so on. Now, personalization builds on top of segmentation. Personalization is about optimizing communication and messages to the individuals based on what you know about their behaviors and preferences. So when you put it all together, even though your subscribers may, in, may be in groups with other similar customers, if you are catering your messages to these shared interests, they will feel like you're addressing them individually with timely and relevant messages they'll want to receive. This means they're more likely to engage, interact, and spend with you. So what does this mean for you all? Personalization boosts engagement and loyalty. And when we think about this in terms of the metric, the metrics, we're looking at higher click-through rate, conversion rate, and ROI. Now, 
We dug into the numbers and for attentive clients using one or more customer segments, we saw 1.5% higher click-through rate and 29% higher conversion rate. On average, they were using 34 customer segments to better engage with their audience. Now we know most brands are heavily focused on revenue. However, personalization goes above and beyond short-term revenue impact. Personalization is also an amazing conduit for increasing customer feedback, improving lead nurturing, improving customer experience, and raising customer retention, which we're excited to touch on later in the presentation. So now that we've laid a foundation, I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel to get us started with segmentation and personalization. Thanks so much, Maddie. Hi, everyone, so excited to be here today. Before we get back into the content for this session, I want a quick show of hands. Raise your hand if segmentation is currently part of your SMS marketing strategy. Nice, all right, keep your hands there. Keep them up, okay. Keep your hand up if you use more than two segments on a regular basis. Amazing, what about five, 10, 20? Look at that, very nice. All right, so look around. We're gonna share a bunch of amazing stuff up here, but there are some people in the audience that you can definitely discuss and learn from a bit later as well. So the conversation that I have with brands most often is how do I get started and what's the best approach? And the truth is that there isn't a one size solution for everybody. The approach is gonna be different depending on your brand and the products that you sell. But we have three different ways that you can look at getting started. The first being a message first strategy. This is when you know what you wanna say, but you need to find the audience to match it. A good example would be a location-based message or even product affinity. So the example that we have here is from ABC Carpet and Home. They had a store opening in Brooklyn, so they knew the message that they wanted to send, and then it just became about curating the segment that they were going to send it to. The second is a goal-first approach. This is when you have a goal in mind, so think engagement, ROI, AOV, and then you need to find both the message and the audience that you wanna send that message to. The audience is probably the easiest piece here. So in this uh, example from Pharmacy Beauty, we're looking at a VIP segment, and then we sent a message to um, the group offering a free set of products for a threshold over 65 or more. The incentive is less to get this group to buy because they're VIP, we know that they buy from you quite frequently, so it's a good message to send to that group. The third is a little bit more advanced and that's behavior-based messaging. And this is when you wanna move customers through the life cycle with different behavioral triggers and touch points based on where they are in their journey. So the example that we have here is from Birkenstock. They have a members only, which I didn't know until recently. They have a member only um, kind of community and so this is sending a message specifically to that group. So similar to loyalty, being able to trigger a message based on the group that, they know that, that you know that they're in and in a timely manner. So as much as I love talking to you, I also think that it's important that we incorporate our guest speakers into the conversation. So we're gonna include a couple questions here. So Kevin, we'll start with you. How do you approach segmentation for Crocs? Yeah, so Crocs, I'd say we're we use kind of like hyper segmentation. So we look at our message and goal together and determine you know, who should get the message and who might best benefit from that message. Um, we have some standard segments as well, but we look at our go-to-market campaigns really in that hyper mode and try to get the most out of each message. Amazing, thank you. And then Nathan, building off of that, um, what are some of your best performing segments and what do you think makes them top performers for Shields? Yeah, so for us, I mean, a lot of times we're looking at um, engagement um, and trying to figure out really who, who is the, the best customer to talk to. Um, again, our brand is very wide from shoes to clothing to, to fishing and sports. And so, again, the more um, specific we seem to get, the, the better success we have. Um, but then again, when it's really timely as well, again, nobody really cares about a team winning until they do win, and then we got to capture in that moment. And so um, that's where, again, a lot of times we're looking at it both from a message first or goal first, depending on the situation. Amazing, and we'll see some examples a little bit later as well. So if you're interested in getting started or you've gotten started and you're looking for some more opportunities, I'm gonna share some of our favorite out of the box segments that you can start using. So we've talked about two of these already, that would be the location-based and the VIP messaging. The other two are high intent and engaged. 
So an example of what your high intent audience may look like is a subscriber, a group of subscribers who have added to cart two or more times in the last 30 days but have not made a purchase. In this instance, a message that you could send would be a 24 hour exclusive offering free shipping on their entire order to get them over the hump. You know that they're engaged, you know that the intent is there, so now it's just getting them to pull the trigger on that buy. On the other side, we have the engaged audience, and this could be a group that has purchased one or more times and clicked on a link three or more times in a given time frame. A message that you maybe would send to this group is awareness about a loyalty program that you have. So in this instance, they've purchased from you, but how do you really build that relationship to keep them coming back for more? So I'll throw this question over to Kevin. Are there any out-of-the-box segments that work particularly well for you and for Crocs? Yeah, it's kind of actually in the engagement bucket, but in a reverse out of the box, which is being able to make sure that we engage with all of our subscribers. So as your list gets larger, you're going to have people fall through the cracks once they're out of the journey. So being able to build segments of people who haven't received messages in seven days or 14 days really helps us make sure that we're talking to our entire audience. Awesome. So now that we've talked about the basics, we're going to kick it up a notch. Uh, and so this is for your segmentation pros, how we can take your segmentation strategy to the next level. So look, we've done a lot of talking about data the past two days. I know that you have heard it in multiple different segments. I'm not here to tell you that you can do it. I'm here to talk about the outcomes and what the benefit to your SMS channel and strategy is by implementing some of these solutions. So data is king. We know that data is um, what makes you competitive in the market, and it can also be the biggest differentiator for you and a competitor, or versus a competitor. A data-rich program um, really gives any brand the upper hand. And so by integrating and orchestrating with other channels and the data that you have in other places, it can make the world of a difference. So think of this as a menu. I'm gonna give you all of your options and tell you a little bit about why you might wanna integrate these and some of the segments that you can use to personalize your strategy. The first being your e-commerce platform. We have a number of out-of-the-box integrations for your e-commerce platform, Shopify, Salesforce, BigCommerce, um, and the benefit of integrating your e-commerce platform here is segments like product-based behaviors, back in stock, low inventory, and more. So very timely messaging that adds a bit of urgency. We also have integrations with customer data platforms. And with these, you're able to sync segments from um, cross-channel customer insights. So again, not just taking insights from this particular channel, but taking juice from other pieces of your marketing channels um, and bringing it into text. Now these next two are a bit more complicated. Often they require a little bit of dev work. If you have it available, it's absolutely worth the investment. Um, if not, I'll tell you a little bit about it and maybe, maybe you can get there one day. Uh, so that would be a customer events API and the product catalog API. The product catalog API is a great alternative if we don't have an integration with uh, your e-commerce platform. And custom events is really Pandora's box. It's completely unlimited. And with these two, what it, they enable you to do is um, send messages based on transactional updates, loyalty touch points, and even on-site events like when a subscriber adds um, something to their wish list. The next is your ESP. Uh, this one's kind of a given, hopefully, you know, we can have most of you integrated with your ESP, and this is really what helps you drive that orchestration via a data post back between channels. And then the last, another really popular topic, which we've heard about today, and I think there's another session coming up on it soon, uh, loyalty. So integrating your loyalty partners, which again, helps you increase lifetime value and drive conversions long-term, being able to message on tiers, rewards, and other type of loyalty-focused touch points. So bringing our um, guests here back into the conversation, the question that I have for both of you is, which integrations are you leveraging most and how are you using them in the channel? And Nathan, I'll let you start, yeah. Absolutely, um, so for us, uh, we use Salesforce for a lot of different things, so um, we definitely have all of those. And again, a lot of the common things that you ultimately um, mentioned in there. Um, and again, a lot of times it's around an event or a customer doing something, which we all know trigger messages uh, just perform better. Um, but I know in preparation, talking to Kevin, um, there's a few more that you guys use, and I have a list now of, of projects when I get back <laughs> to the office. So, Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a Salesforce house as well, um, so we really pay attention to that, those connectors. Um, we do some of the, the product catalog through the custom API. 
I'd say with Salesforce Connection, you know, a lot of our modals we're focusing both on email and SMS capture. So a lot of it for us is overlapping segmentation, you know, which can be done with a connection to a CDP, but if you're capturing both data points at the same time, you can kind of share that between your ESP and your um, SMS program, you know, who's most engaged in what channel and who's buying, who's abandoning cart, um, just makes it easy when the data is in both places. Amazing. So many good insights, and I love that you guys can now share. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Sharing is caring. <laughs> So next to loyalty, the big topic that comes up a lot, right? Third-party data is becoming increasingly more challenging, uh, but brands still need a way to bring a lot of that good data into the platform. And so we have a couple different solutions that allow you to collect zero and, zero and first-party data in order to maximize your personalization strategy. The three main ones here are collecting attributes, collecting preferences, and then even using text-to-keyword campaigns to trigger journeys. So we have examples from both of our guest speakers up here, but we'll quickly run through them. So the first example, we have a campaign message, kind of like a subscriber's quiz. So sending a message out so that um, subscribers can kind of self-select what they're interested in. The second is collecting preferences via sign-up units. So you can see at the very onset, getting all this good information to immediately put subscribers into a segment and to hyper-target them later on. And then the text-to-keyword campaign message to trigger a journey, kind of similar to the first, uh, but a little more advanced, which we'll actually maybe kick off and let Nathan talk through. So um, this is a... Um, a text that went out for Father's Day. We have a couple different tiers here. Can you tell us about the thought process behind this and what the results were for this from this type of message? Yeah, so for us, I mean, again, very broad audience. And again, there's, of course, key times of the year, gift giving, Father's Day is a big one. Um, but one of the things that really drew us to attentive in the beginning was really that idea of, again, talking to our customer, uh, especially in the digital space. If you go into one of our stores, um, again, the experience is incredible. Um, but again, digitally, that just gets tougher to create that connection. So in this example, ultimately, it was just a way to say, okay, hey, you know, what are you looking for, for dad? Um, and you know, how much are you willing to spend? And then we kind of curated a list uh, for them. Um, again, not surprising, much higher click-through rate on our message versus if we just said something basic. Um, but again, this is something where we feel like it, it's a little bit more of that back and forth and they're going to probably continue to build on it you know, over time, um, again, whether it's a dollar amount or, or other ways that we can do this. Amazing. And then Kevin, for you, this is also a really interesting example of a conversational type message. So can you tell us about the thought process behind the approach? Yeah, as you can see, it's kind of promotional base, but we wanted to kind of move some personalization into it. Um, our gibbets are how we personalize Crocs, and there's over 700 SKUs. So instead of having the customer you know, have to browse through the site, we use something like this to try to get them the content that they hope for, um, and then obviously hopefully turn it into a promotion, to a promotion with an extra purchase. But um, just a faster way for hopefully them to get that personalized experience in the commerce um, through the SMS channel. And we have no gibbets on your proxy. No, these, these don't have gibbets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'm just going to bring it back to loyalty because I think that this is, again, next to data, the most top of mind conversation that I see brands having right now. How you can bring loyalty into this channel. So, of course, it exists on its own, but it's so much more potent if you're able to bring it into your SMS strategy. The easiest way to do it if you're not integrated or we're not integrated yet with your loyalty channel is to use conversational messaging to identify loyalty program members in your list. So the example over here to the right is a simple question just saying, are you a member with us? Are you in our loyalty list? Uh, so again, collecting that data allows you then create, to create a segment which you can use later on. Now, if you are able to integrate your loyalty program, there's a lot more information that we can target on, that being, segmenting your messages based on members versus non-members, messaging your list based on their loyalty status, like tiers, points, rewards, and more, and then promoting your loyalty program via journeys to encourage new subscribers to join your loyalty program and earn rewards. What this could look like as a campaign message, we have an example here from Hot Topic. This one's super simple. So for loyalty members, you're sending them that loyalty op offer, which is hot cash. For the non-loyalty members, Instead of sending them that specific offer, it's more a tease out using FOMO and urgency to hopefully get them on board. So figuring out a way to let them know, give them awareness that you have it, and also giving them an idea of what the benefits are to encourage them to join it later on. 
And then we have a quick visual here of how to bring this type of messaging into Journeys. Um, so this is for a welcome message. A subscriber opts in. We have that first welcome message that goes out. And then depending on what the next behavior is, indicates when you can bring that loyalty messaging into the conversation. So if a subscriber makes a purchase rather than just bringing them out of the journey, instead using it as a touch point or an opportunity to automate letting them know that you have a loyalty program. Now that they've made a purchase, incentivize them to come back. For subscribers who didn't purchase, leaning first on promoting that first purchase by sending a coupon reminder text and then going into awareness about your loyalty program. All said, we've shared a lot of information and we wanna make it super easy for you to bring all of these tactics back and into your strategy. So we put together this quick guide, which you'll get later, um, that gives you a whole list of different ways to approach and go about this. It's amazing to use in conversations internally and also with your attentive CSMs to figure out how you can continue to enhance and broaden your strategy. So now we're gonna hand the mic primarily over to our guests here um, and talk a little bit about some of what they've done with their broader strategy in the SMS channel. Awesome, okay. Let's talk about Crocs. <laughs> Kevin has cultivated a messaging strategy, for, strategy that is as unique as the Crocs brand in order to drive engagement, conversion, and ROI. Crocs, as I mentioned, is a huge footwear brand, and they've been with Attentive for two years. Crocs has over 400 segments, which is a lot, <laughs> and they have sold a ton of shoes. They have sold over 850 million pairs of shoes since they opened their doors in 2002. So, Kevin, thank you again for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about why you started with Attentive and what you were looking to get out of SMS? Sure. Um... When Crocs was looking to move into the SMS channel, we were obviously looking for a good partner, but more about the SMS channel, we were looking for something that could deliver a collab experience, a hype experience to our customers in a really timely manner. Um, and that meant a, a channel that was that fast for the consumer, but I think it also meant a partner who could move that fast. Um, our collaborators are very picky people about their product and the campaigns. Um, and so we had to have something where our marketers could deliver that experience to our customers and for our collaborators. Awesome, thank you. So you mentioned a little bit about your collabs. How would you categorize your different customers? Our customers uh, span the gamut, really, um, of anybody who wants a comfortable shoe to you know, streetwear and footwear uh, hype people who really want something like what I'm wearing today, which is, doesn't really look like a classic Croc. So it's, it's difficult to say that we have um, really groups, but as we gain those customers and bring them in through different funnels, that's where we use segmentation to make sure we know who they are and how to talk to them. Perfect. This is a good transition into <laughs> our next slide. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about your segmentation strategies. So could you tell us a little bit about segmenting by sign-up method and why this is effective? Sure. As we kind of mentioned, collabs were our big entry into the SMS channel, but Again, knowing that all of our collaborations are very different. Um, Post Malone and Cinnamon Toast Crunch, probably not the same customer, <laughs> uh, potentially, but uh, we wanted to make sure that, again, that we knew where these customers came into our um, ecosystem and where they signed up on so that we can continue that message. And it's been uh, very beneficial as we've continued relationships with certain collaborators. Um, or in this instance, with Cinnamon Toast Crunch, we had a couple other serial launches. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we gave them the first uh, opportunity for those shoes. Cool. Our next example is a fun one. Um, can you tell us about how Crocs hosted a virtual Easter egg hunt and what inspired this idea? Yeah, this was um, an idea from our North America CRM manager to really improve some engagement um, around somewhat normal, traditional like promotional period, but do something more fun. Um, so as you can see here, this is a, a screenshot of an email where we were trying to do some cross-channel acquisition, take some of our email subscribers and move them into something more specific and timely like SMS. So now we're going to take a look at what this actually looked like for the Crocs subscribers. Do you want to walk us through these texts and the results? Sure. So obviously, like I said, we tried to gain people in through um, a landing page funnel and then obviously welcomed them to that experience. Um, a tactic that we've used before with other promotions, especially during the holidays, is, is fill your cart. Um, this obviously 
selfishly puts more people in other funnels uh, that we all use in triggered messaging. But at the same time, um, when the customer does receive their promotional code, they can then check out faster and hopefully increase conversion for us. Um, and then we kind of go through, you know, that urgency flow of this, uh, these codes are no longer going to be available soon and kind of last chance. Um, but this was just a really fun experience that our teams put together with our on-site experience and then the SMS channel. And you saw amazing results, as you can see on the screen. Yes. Kevin, thank you so much. Um, this has been awesome. Now we're going to talk about Shields. Yes. So. Shields has a number of different ways that they use segments primarily to create unique customer experience and engage with their target, target audience, which you now have heard is extremely diverse. So I'll reintroduce Kevin here. Um, so Kevin, again, is an e-commerce, uh, Nathan, sorry. <laughs> is, we look uh, the same, so. <laughs> Identical. Right. Totally. Actually, yes. <laughs> Um, is an e-commerce analytics leader at Shields and has done a ton to really optimize how they're speaking to their customers for all the variety of products that they have. Um, and so they have been on Attentive for a year and a half. Um, they use over 100 different SMS segments. And what I found a very interesting fact is that their largest Shields store is 331,000 square feet. So naturally what the people want to know is what came first, the Ferris wheel or the size of the store? <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Um, again, Brandon's been around for quite a while, uh, started in 1902. So again, a lot of people I have not heard of us, uh, just with a lot of our stores, prim primarily in the Midwest, uh, down to Texas and then West. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't remember how many years ago now, we added a Ferris wheel in a store, and when we built our store in Texas, uh, in 20, opened in 2020, uh, put a 65-foot Ferris wheel in the middle of it, um, and it's honestly my kid's favorite thing to do. Uh, it's what they <laughs> want to do on their birthdays. But uh, um, as we, you know, looked for a partner uh, to get into the SMS space, um, again, our, our, our stores are, are very diverse. Um, and we were really looking for a partner that was going to help us. Um, we had a lot of speculation um, of, is this the right move for us, um, and different things like that. Um, but again, Attentive was great and said, hey, let's do the trial. Let's prove it out and see if it works. Um, and, and again, just really helped us uh, figure out what our strategy should be in this space. And now, again, feels like a lot more than a year and a half. Um, but again, it's crazy to see how far we've come in, in just a short time. Yeah, you've certainly been able to accomplish quite a bit in quite a short amount of time. And so something that's really unique about Shields is that you're definitely less of a promotional brand and more focused on driving the lifetime value for customers, which also means that you're less focused on individual message outcomes, but the broader strategy. Um, so can you talk us a bit through that strategy? Yeah, I mean, that's a lot where our, our probably our speculation came of like, could this be a channel for us? Um, just because, again, you go to most sites and it's 20% off here, 20, you know, 30% off there is the way that they attract us. Um, but really, again, we just said, okay, what, what is core to our brand? Um, and if we remain that, you know, can we see the signups? And um, I know the attentive team was surprised by the results we saw by not having a promotion um, compared to some, maybe some other examples. But, you know, again, our thought was, again, we're, we have a lot of seasonal shops, whether you're a baseball player or you uh, fish or, again, my kids seem to need shoes all the time. So there's just a lot going on. And a lot of times we have, again, families coming into our stores. So um, our goal is just, again, to really continue to listen to what the customer's doing. Um, a lot of times it's in multiple segments and just be really, really dialed in um, with talking to you about what you want. I know a lot of times some people on our team get excited and they're like, ah, or they get disappointed because they're like, ah, oh, that group's only that big. And I'm like, if that's the right group, that's who we want to talk to. So we continue to, you know, do some different A-B testing again of, of is it the right audience or not and just continuing to challenge ourselves to say, again, is it the right message for the right customer at the right time, which is the marketer's challenge. But I think, again, we're making progress, which is all we can ask. Yeah, and from our conversations, it sounds like testing is definitely a big part of your strategy, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, but first, can you tell us a little bit more about other tactics that you use to drive engagement all year round without that promotional focus? Yeah, I think there's just, uh, you know, again, whether it's product launches um, or, again, with a lot of things we do, I mean, with fishing, like I can sell you more fishing stuff, but um, how to catch more fish would probably be a, a something that maybe, you know, you're interested in as well. And so, again, a lot of different messages that we have really just depends on the group that you're in. Um, but again, it's timing is really everything. 
Um, and we'll probably see that in the slide here a little bit of just, again, right message, right customer, right time. Um, and then again, if you treat them well, you'll see them come back. Amazing. So yeah, good opportunity for us to talk about segmenting and particularly by location. So let's talk a little bit about that and then personalizing your message you know, to this diverse audience. So Shields has stores across many different regions of the United States. How does segmentation help localize your marketing strategy? Yeah, I mean, I, when we opened our Texas store, um, again, it was probably not our first Southern store, um, but it was probably one of the challenges. And, um, again, this morning in North Dakota, where, where we're headquartered, uh, it was 28 degrees. Um, probably a great opportunity to send a winter jacket email or, or text. Um, probably text would be faster. Um, but, uh, um, again, people in Texas probably aren't thinking about that yet. So, again, it's just super simple on the attentive platform for us to, you know, segment by either state or, or region um, and just quickly get that message out. A lot of times we felt like in other channels we were, you know, maybe struggling to get creative done in time. Um, but I've seen a lot of success by that. And then again, although when Milwaukee, you know, do, launches something or we launch that collection or like when the Jayhawks won, um, you know, a lot of times in marketing, you see that brand messaging everywhere. Um, I know for my sports teams, which don't seem to win very often, um, it's, there's nothing more frustrating than to see the championship gear for another team. Um, and so again, it just allows us to really get the right message to the right customer at the right time and be quick. Um, and again, then the results typically show. And you don't feel like you're wasting your marketing spend, which is Huge. always half the challenge too. <laughs> yeah, it's always moving around and we want to give it a place to be. Um, and so talking, delving a little bit more into the testing side of things, we know that that's super important to your team. So localizing is a really you know, important part. But then again, you know, finding the right message. Um, so this is a great example of how you went about doing that and also you know, what the outcomes were from taking that um, type of approach. So what are some lessons you've learned and can you talk us through this um, specific example? Yeah, I mean, this is just a really good example and again, credit to the team. Um, I have a phenomenal team back there that, does, that orchestrates all of this. But um, this is just a really good example and I think as marketers sometimes, you know, it's when, when you look at your subscriber counts or um, and you're like, ah, is that big enough? It's really easy just to, you know, ah, let's grab this segment as well to really, you know, get the number you feel like is going to make you happy. Um, but this is an example, again, usually at A-B test copy or send times or different things. And here it was pretty much just testing saying, hey, here's a really good segment that we know we want to send to. And then here's another one that, you know, maybe in the past we would drag over. And so we just sent them um, ultimately the same message or really close to it. Um, and then just looked at the results between it. We kind of looked at the A-B test there and it kind of confirmed again, yes, we did see a, an 8% click-through rate on the one, but again, it, it, it could have been an distraction to a lot of them as well, just not being a, the right message at the right time. So at different times, we ultimately like to do something like this just to reassure um, that, we, that we're getting the right message to the right audience. And again, another way or another take on A-B testing. Amazing. Any other tips for the audience when they're approaching testing um, and, and what type of different segments you can use? I mean, let your mind run, I think, is the thing that we continue to challenge ourselves with. Um, it's just not, you know, what we did before doesn't always mean it's going to work again. And so, again, continuing to look at the data, try the things. Again, in, in texting, it's just so easy, um, a lot easier, I guess, in our minds yeah. um, to, to versus other channels. And so, again, we just continue to look at the data, find the groups, find what's, who's engaging, and then say, okay, what's the similarity there? And, and again, what more can we do to foster that? Um, again, we've talked a lot the last day and a half about talking you know, to the customer. Um, I would say with the customer, I'd even challenge that and say almost that, again, we should be talking with the customer, expecting them to respond, and when they do, you know, how do we take that engagement to the next level? Great. So bringing us home, we have a few things we want to make sure that you're taking away with you today. Um, so first of all, marketing personalization is now necessary to stay competitive in the market. Any opportunity that you have to integrate segments with all of your data platforms, across data platforms, and even collect some of your own data to achieve next level personalization is 100% worth the investment. And personalization not only drives revenue, but also is huge for driving loyalty, engagement, conversions, and lifetime value. And that's okay. a wrap for today.
Yep, that's a wrap. Um, you'll be able to get the session recording via the virtual event link. Um, you can also visit our SMS blogs, and we actually have a Q&A, so now we're gonna start taking questions. Hi. Um, how do you guys go about tracking the performance of your campaigns to in-store customers? You've got more retail footprint uh, than we do. Oh, uh, <laughs> man. Um, probably our biggest challenge today, um, and something that we're continually working on. Um, again, I think everybody tries to do it with like digital receipts and, and stuff like that. Uh, we also launched an app last year, um, and so, um, I wouldn't say we're perfect at it yet, um, but it is something that we're, again, continuing to really push through because it, it is one of those things. Um, for me, I'd rather go to the store even, um, rather than shop on the website and um, experience the Ferris wheel with my kids. And so the last thing I want to do as a marketer is you know, see you looking at something on our website and then go to the store um, and send you that abandoned browser or abandoned cart. So um, we're pushing the envelope to try and get there. Um, I wouldn't say we're perfect, um, but that's where, again, even talking backstage a little bit, I think there's, it's where you just gotta keep pushing ourselves as marketers to, to think outside the box um, and not you know, expect them to always use a digital receipt or something like that. Yeah, Crocs is about 200 retail locations, mainly in outlet malls, and that's a lot of our segmentation too comes from those, so we'll do like um, a text to join keyword that's specific to that store and then trigger that journey so that the, the coupon codes or the, the offers that's coming from that store, we can then somewhat track back to the, the segment. Um, it's a little cumbersome to do, but you know we're trying to do it as like a proof of concept and then see if this really works or we can really see performance out of those stores. How do we scale that? Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm Sierra. I'm director of CRM and loyalty at Beauty Counter. Um, so a lot of segmentation starts with good data. Um, so I had a question for you guys around kind of your data solutioning. Are all of these, um, the way you're building your segments, is it exclusively the data you're collecting that's being like from attentive and, or where is your data housed? And then how are those segments shared across channels? Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, we're just moving into a CDP currently. So we're starting to use some of that, but I'd say primarily just for speed to market and ease of use, uh, our teams use the segmentation functionality that's inattentive to really spin up where they want to target. Um, we do have connections to our ESP. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, where we're doing some overlap and then passing that back. Um, so I'd say it's probably 90% in platform right now, and we're just getting to that point for how can we share that data out. You know, as Attentive's shown, they want they want to have more data, and how do we get it into a CDP and then pass it back to other channels? But we're not. We're not quite there on the journey. Yeah, same thing for us. I'd say we're doing a lot in there. Um, you know, sometimes there are the data that we have in other systems, um, and I think this is where, again, for us, our attentive team's been awesome. You know, again, whether it's helping us upload lists or do whatever we need to do to get that data in there. So, um, I'd say we're, you know, maybe Frankensteining it a little bit today, but again, it's probably where a lot of our efforts are being put to to get to that. Um, is that holy grail achievable? I mean, we'll see. We um, so. Yeah, a lot of work being yeah. done, but um, it, I think that's where, again, talking with other customers, I think we're all kind of in the same struggle today, um, especially as you want to do things like personalizing email and the text, let alone app and, you know, other touch points with the customer. Yeah. I think you need to, like, just try to build as many segments as personalized as you can. I think sometimes we think of the idea and we go, we don't have the data to get there, but what other data might you have to get close? Uh, I think that's where our teams really strive is trying to see where they can get, and then they'll come to you know, like myself on the Martech side and be like, "How can I do better?" Um, but I think a lot of times we stop and we go, "I couldn't get the perfect segment," and then they end up more in the batch and blast. So I just kind of urge people to keep trying to build. Attentive keeps adding new attributes to the segment builder, um, so just keep pushing on it. Great, thank you. I have a question for our speakers. Um, both of you have a ton of segments. Kevin has 400, Nathan has over 100. 
Um, how do you find the optimal number of segments? Is there ever too little, too many? Uh, there would be people at Crocs that argue we have too many. <laughs> um, I don't know if there is a number. I think it comes down to your strategy, right? Like from a content perspective or what your overall go-to-market strategy looks like should really determine the amount of segments you have. Um, 400 is probably the number we have in the U.S., which is a really large region, is very active. Um, we're in four other countries, and they don't use near as many segments. They kind of have a standard bucket of probably a couple of dozen. So again, it just kind of comes down to their campaigns and their go-to-market strategy is a little less complex. Um, so that's how we determine how many. Awesome. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I, I don't think we have enough. Um, again, there'd probably be people <laughs> I would argue we have too many. But again, I think this is where, again, the more we can get to that one-to-one, -one, which is the marketer's dream, um, again, I, I, I just think it goes back to, again, if you think you can break up a group and make it a better experience for those, then, then do it. Um, it's got to be manageable, of course. But again, the more that you can, if you can, if you sit there and you're like, that's what I think I should do, then do it. Um, and again, the performance usually shows that it's worth the extra effort. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you to our amazing speakers. Um, have a, rest, a great rest of your day and enjoy the party tonight.